has been found guilty on five of six felony charges that he faced for falsely reporting he was a victim of a hate crime. All charges for disorderly conduct and would typically be punishable by up to three years in prison. But experts say since he had a clean criminal record, he will likely not serve any time. Back in 2019, the actor claimed he was viciously assaulted by two men in a homophobic attack. Police later learned the men were recruited by Smollett himself, who reportedly planned the incident in hopes of boosting his flailing acting career. Joining us now to discuss the verdict and his own ties to the case is newsman Rafer Weigel. Rafer, how you doing? Doing well, Paul. I'm, I'm grateful to be talking to uh, what did Mark call you, the king of news? Yeah, well, yeah, he he, he does it w with the dripping in sarcasm. So please, <laughs> uh, well, I, do I was not... envious of this uh, weather forecast coming to you live here from Chicago. Yeah, I bet. Uh, first of all, you, to, nothing to me epitomizes how mainstream media was in bed with the Smollett narrative than watching CNN report on it afterwards when they said, in a in a in a social media post, he was guilty of he was found guilty on some charges when it was right. five of six. I mean, they can't take their thumb off the scale. And uh, perhaps I, I know that's going to be the theme of our conversation. But can you explain how you were the first to raise the alarm that hey, something doesn't smell right here? Yeah, I mean, listen, we all found out about it in Chicago. Uh, we were all at a press conference. The city was about to give an announcement on the second night of a polar vortex with record setting temperatures, freezing cold temperatures. People were dying outside. And as any reporter who, who knows, when you're out there at a press conference, what do you do? You're on your phone, you're on Twitter. We see the we see the story cross the wires, if you will. And every one of us looked at each other and went, yeah, that didn't happen. Anybody who knows the city of Chicago knows if there are two white supremacists wearing MAGA hats, carrying bleach and rope at 2.30 in the morning in 30 degree below zero weather, they were the ones who would have needed the police protection. Now, I myself did not personally, even though I didn't buy the story, I did not say there's no way this happened. I attribute it to police, which is the first rule of journalism. If your mother says she loves you, as you know, Paul, double check it. And I called my guy over at Chicago Police Department on, you know, we're speaking candidly right now. He had just gotten back from the bars. So he was a little more candid than normal. And he came right out and said, yeah, this is a bunch of BS. We're not buying it. I said, can I quote you on that on the record? He said, yeah, do it anonymously. You just say we're skeptical, but we're taking it seriously. So I did. Uh, I did tweet that out. I did report it. And I think what was really shocking to me was how much vitriol and backlash uh, I received when I did it. I wasn't saying that Jesse Smollett was attacked. And you mentioned the, the, the other traditional media outlets. You know, when it first happened, the Washington Post went with the headline, Jesse Smollett attacked in a racist homophobic incident. No, the truth was Jesse Smollett says he was attacked. We don't know if he was attacked. We were not there. Uh, so I was really shocked actually at how irresponsible uh, certain news outlets were and how they continue to try to attach their narrative to the story um, when, you know, it's, it's, it's just a story, you know, our position, our narrative doesn't matter. Right. So, but, but obviously nothing like this happens in a bubble. I mean, this is coming off the summer of unrest of, uh, social injustice and, uh, BML, BLM riots mm -hmm. and the CNNs and the MSNBCs and the Washington Post, and New York Times of the world, they form their narrative that this is an unjust society and this story fit right into their wheelhouse. But now that the verdicts are in, and it's a pretty convincing decision that, that Smollett falsified this, where is the omission of, hey, you know what, we got this one wrong, folks? Well, and I, st and I speak, you know, I I'm no longer working in traditional media. Um, and one of the reasons I believe that's true is because of my position on the Jesse Smollett story. I was told by my own station to shut it down, and I refused. You know, they say they we I worked for a Fox affiliate in Chicago. This was a Fox show. They were worried. My news director was worried about getting a backlash from our corporate overlords. And I said, look, this is my job. And I'm not in and I'm you know, police were trusting me to release information. You know, for instance, he was seen carrying a subway sandwich uh, on a surveillance video after the alleged attack with a rope around his neck. It's all on my Twitter page at Rafer Weigel, shameless plug. Um, but in terms of the, uh, you know, the egg on the face, you know, I, 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 I think that the main the, the more. The local media, I think, learned a lesson from this. Now, the CNNs, I can't speak for them. The New York Times, you know, I followed them. I got to know the reporter on that beat. You know, I remind people that the New York Times were also the ones who broke the Hillary email story as well. I do feel like, and, and I checked, they, they, they did not say it as truth 
uh, initially, but the Post did and the Chicago Sun-Times did. And I do think that there needs to be a good hard lesson learned here because you know, you, you can't insert your, your point of view into these stories. You have to be able to purport the truth. That's our job. But Rafe, um, And sadly, our, our, our industry is, and, and I want to give one more shameless plug to your news director, Steve Cohen. I want your viewers to know, so this KUSI is the first station I ever worked. Steve Cohen gave me my first job in 2005. KUSI viewers, you need to know that the man at the helm of your station is focused on telling the truth, whether you like it or not. And I really admire that. I've worked in a lot of stations, and Steve Cohen is the best news director I have ever worked for. Uh, there, Rafe, I to get we that we, out we there. sometimes take that for granted, but yeah, I, I, I hardly, whether you like it or not, he, all he cares about is the truth with a capital T. But here's here's one of the truths of all this: is the, the injustice is in people that are actually victims of hate right. crimes are now going to be tainted by by the media's thumb on the scale. And, and until we have an honest objective, until we have more Steve Cohens working at places like CNN and whatnot, this society is in a world of hurt, is it not? Because real victims of hate crimes are now not going to be less likely to be believed. That's, that's a really good point, Paul. In fact, a lot of the people who reached out to me on Twitter, you know, as much as I got a lot of vitriol, I also got a lot of support and got a lot of praise from folks on the left and the right. Um, you know, Sean Hannity, uh, uh, you know, had me on and, and, you know, the way he butchered my name was legendary. So hats off to you, Paul. You got it really well done. But there was a lot of folks on the left, uh, gay, African-American, who were upset at Smollett for the very reason you just cited, that, look, there are real victims of hate crimes out there that now, you know, are their stories going to be taken as seriously? You know, for him to try to 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 try to capitalize on, on that narrative at the expense of real victims, that angered a lot of people on the left. And I want people to realize, yes, there were the, the Black Lives Matter groups and the CNNs and the MSNBCs that wanted this to be true. But there were a lot of people, a lot of liberals and the people on the left that reached out to me and said, thank you, because this to me is shameful on his part. And they were equal, even more angry at him as they should be for him making this up. And we don't need to say allegedly anymore. He made this up. And earlier you reported that he may not do prison time. I just talked to a couple lawyers who uh, I'm still, I'm not in journalism news anymore, but I'm still following the case. And I just talked to some of the lawyers who were uh, prosecuting him in the city trial. They believe he could do a year in prison for this. And uh, and he's also looking at a federal case against the city of Chicago that wants that $130,000 they spent on the investigation. His legal troubles are, are not over by any stretch. Plus the, the prosecutor uh, is, is mentioned that he should be uh, cited for perjury for lying in the courtroom. So that could happen as well. Well, you know, I, I just wish some of that uh, justice would also be wielded on uh, some of the news outlets who, uh, you know, Jesse Simlet, you know, that, he's a bit player in this. Uh, to me, the real crimes were done by the news medias and the mainstream medias. So, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't disagree with you. I, I, I'll be honest. I was shocked at the amount of tension I got for sticking to the truth. Um, you know, appearing on outlets like Laura Ingram and Sean Hannity. This is how I reconnected with Steve because he watched me and Glenn Beck had me on. And, and, and I, I, I don't want to say I was hailed, but I was, you know, I was praised for doing my job. And all I said was, look, I just did my job. If police had told me that Jesse Smollett was, in fact, attacked by two white supremacists wearing MAGA hats, carrying rope and bleach at 2.30 in the morning, I would have reported that, too, if they said they thought it was true. Because truthfully, that's a better story. Who are these two guys? You know, um, but that's not what they told me. And and by always attributing it to my sources, you know, I never inserted my own viewpoint into the narrative, even though my viewpoint was I didn't think this was true. I followed the first rule of journalism. It doesn't matter what I think. This is what my sources are telling me. And this is what I am reporting. So I agree with you, Paul. Just be glad you work at a good place like uh, like KUSI for a guy like Steve Cohen. For at least for now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rafer, uh, thank you so much. We will talk again, uh, and uh, we wish you uh, warmth in the Windy City, okay? Thank you, sir. All right, we'll be right back with more Good Morning San Diego.